interconnectedness of all things. We live in kind of an invisible exoskeleton of data and interconnectedness, and everything we do, everything we touch, is part of the web of interconnectedness. How vulnerable are things in America? Who are they vulnerable to? Could just anyone out there with a desire to wreak havoc just go do that? It is a terrorist attack. It's the type of terrorist attack that this world hasn't really seen yet. There is definitely a real threat. Any organization with large network presence some information of value is, is potentially a target. It's been fairly well established that People's Liberation Army has a task force the size of a small software company whose main purpose is to get inside of networks and stay there. We're trying to find out the clues, the fingerprints, like forensics, but in cyber. We go head to head with the Chinese on their cyber intrusion. Not a bad idea to be face to face working with them. We need a man named Hathaway. What do we know about this guy? He's a convicted hacker serving 15 years. Genius coder. If we want to move around within this code, looking for clues to the hacker's identity, we need Nicholas Hathaway. Copy whatever is in Sadak's home directory onto the external drive. I want to look at that drive that I just disconnected. A small liaison group was put together with a Chinese network engineer, Tang Wei, her brother, who works in cyber defense unit within the PLA, okay. an FBI agent, Viola Davis, and convicted black hat hacker who has unusual expertise, and that's Hathaway. Someone had to physically enter this room, plug the virus in. We did a few months of computer lessons. I mean, that was kind of the number one thing for me to wrap my head around or, you know, get skillful with. This is the code for our rat. See, it's compact, it's slick, under a mag. You would never picked up on it. We worked on how hackers speak, how they carry themselves. You know, how do they type? What does it sound like? How they address a computer. Section of his code right here is a mess. 25 lines, he's left text, really notes to himself. Dead in ideas. Maybe he's still writing. And he's busy writing code for what's next. There can be some hints to who does what by the types of, I would call them artifacts that are in the code, the choices that they make when they write code. But it's very creative. It's a it's sort of a combination of, of creative and logic. When you're the composer, when you're the architect, you take pride in the work that you do, in the elegance of it, or the economy of the code, and, and everyone will, will write in a different way. So sometimes they put uh, you know, a shout out to someone in a comment to the code, and that's just plain text, you know, that's saying, hey, I wrote this. There's a way of speaking or writing that is specific to that subculture and that kind of decentralization of trust in those kinds of social networks where they're not going to talk to you unless you've been vetted by someone they trust. There are arrogant hackers and there are humble hackers. A certain amount of competitiveness. There's a tendency to turn everything into an intellectual game. Three accounts. Wire transfers to Macau Casino. They're cashing out. We're going to check out. Tibahamba. Who is a black hat hacker? What's his action? What's the exalted experience for him? Purely mental adventure of projecting something you want to do, but to be able to extend himself through the 
internet. Through the abstraction of one and zeros and being able to have a kinetic effect someplace else in the world. You're causing something physical in the physical material world to happen because of your ability to manipulate code. The ability of hackers to go from the world of pure information into the world of you know, what they call the kinetic world. You asked him to change his password? Phishing, that's something that Hathaway is supposedly very good at. If I can get you to click on a link, that's great. If I can get you to click on like a PDF, that's even better, that's great. When he downloaded the PDF, what he downloaded was the key logger. Because then I can put a piece of software on your computer. And now I'm in your computer. Got it. What happens when it becomes kinetic? A hot war. An ability to wipe out power, to wipe out emergency responder systems, and then commence a physical attack, a real kinetic attack. Is he political? Terrorist attack, any declaration? The guy we're working will drop the big hammer and not think twice about it. He's on the move again. Chicago, now China. You locate this guy, you're okay. You get discovered, you're dead meat. He's still writing. War for. Hi, I'm Valerie with an interesting and much discussed fact from The Godfather. Now, it's got to do with Marlon Brando's puffy cheeks. Although popular myth suggests that Brando padded his cheeks with cotton wool to play Vito Corleone, he did so only for the audition. Before the actual filming began, he had a mouthpiece specially created by a dentist. For more movie news, keep it tuned to our channel.